Good morning, Raider fans. I'm Brett Mayerson. I'm Kadar Carrington. And I'm Sam Mahler. And we are here to bring you the latest on our local professional sports and our high school sports here at Scotchman Sam High School. Let's start off with predictions for NFL playoffs. So you got the first game as Baltimore, New England on sun, on Saturday. Excuse me. Uh, who do you think is going to win that one? Uh... I mean, New England's obviously they're the one seed. They're playing like one of the best teams in the NFL. Uh, but you got to remember that Baltimore has gone into New England twice uh, in the playoffs under John Harbaugh, and they've won both times. Uh, they got a great defense led by Terrell Suggs. Uh, I think it's going to be a real grind game, uh, cold, typical New England weather. Um, but I think that Tom Brady and that offense, they're firing on all cylinders, and that defense is playing at a phenomenal level, so I think that New England's going to walk away with the win and move on to the AFC Championship game. Nice. Yeah, uh, uh, Tom Brady and his offense are just amazing to watch. And, I mean, yeah, Baltimore does have a good defense, but there's no way Tom Brady's losing at home it's in the playoffs, so I'm going to go with the Patriots. All right. I might have to defy all of you here, and I'm going to go with Baltimore, only because what Sam said, how they've beaten New England twice, and also that they went into Heinz Field and beat the red-hot Pittsburgh Steelers at home, who have been good at home all year. And I think that even though, I mean, the loss of Ray Rice hurt them a little bit this year, but, I mean, Justin Forsett and Bernard Pierce have been a good backfield, and Joe Flacco's been playing pretty well, so I think the Ravens are going to run away with that one, actually. So now let's move on to the second game. Carolina at Seattle. I think we all know who's going to be the predicted one for this one because it's at Seattle. Uh, yeah, I mean, obviously you got me, the Niner fan, um, but if you look at these two uh, teams, since Week 12, uh, these two teams lead in uh, defensive efficiency and they lead in uh, rushing yards, so it's going to, and if you look, uh, the last three times they've played, uh, no team has put up more than 16 points, so it's going to be a real grind-out game. Uh, You're not going to see a whole lot of passes out of either Wilson or uh, Newton. There's going to be a lot of running the ball, a lot of tough defense. But I think that with the home field advantage, um, I think Seattle moves on in a, in a grinding. Hmm. I don't know. I'm going to have to go with my boy Cam Newton. Um, he's mm-hmm. a dynamic athlete, and I just see him you know, pulling out the win. And they've got a good offense going on. And, I mean, yeah, it's played at Seattle, but I don't know. I think Carolina might take this game. Yeah. Seattle has almost blown a few games at home this year, and they did lose a game at home to the Cowboys. But I am going to go with the Seahawks anyway, only because – They've finally found themselves this year after getting off to that rough start, as Sam yeah. quoted the Super Bowl hangover start. Mm-hmm, that's right. And they finally got out of their funk, and now they're one of the top teams in the league again, of course. Yeah. So yeah. I'm going to go with Seattle also because the 12th man is the best fan base around. <laughs> so, And now we're going to move on to the game that is getting a lot of attention because of a call that m- helped Dallas move on to this game, Dallas at Green Bay. Yeah, uh, we got Ice Bowl Part 2 here. Uh Dallas winning on a controversial uh, defensive pass interference call that ended up being picked up by the referee. Um, I think that uh, you got da- uh, Dallas 8-0 on the road, Romo highest uh, quarterback rating on the road, Rodgers 8-0 at home, best quarterback rating at home. So it's going to be a real uh, offensive shootout. I think it comes down to which defense can step up because you know that both these teams have insane weapons on the offensive side of the field. Mm-hmm. It's a matter of who can step up on defense, and I think that uh, Green Bay is going to gonna do it. Ice Bowl mm-hmm. Part 2, they win. Yeah, I mean, Dallas has been hot this year, and honestly, you see how they've done on the road, and I don't see, I mean, they were lucky to even get into this game, but I think since they've, you know, kind of had that past, I don't know, like past game, then I feel like they're going to definitely like perform to the best. I'm going to have to go with Green Bay as well, only because Green Bay is the one team that plays extremely well in those ice-cold conditions just because of where they're located. Yeah, they used to. And be. also that Rodgers is just phenomenal in the playoffs. Every mm-hmm. time he's in the playoffs, even if he loses a game, the guy puts up incredible numbers. Yeah. And I, even though the Cowboys' defense has been pretty solid this year, I really just don't think it's going to Yeah, I just don't think they have the Green same Bay, to match up. Especially with Eddie the, Lacy in the backfield. Mm-hmm, yeah. The receivers that Green Bay has, I don't think the uh, Cowboys have the receiver, uh, the uh, secondary to man up with them. Yeah, mm-hmm. I don't either. And now for the final playoff game of the week, Indianapolis at Denver. Yeah. Andrew Luck returning to Denver to play the former Colt, Peyton Manning. That's right. You got Manning uh, going against his old team. It's been uh, very high scoring both times that Manning has played the Colts since moving to the Broncos. Um, I actually, I'm going to go with the Colts on this one. Uh, I just love the way that uh, Luck is playing. I think that um, he's 
I think that it's going to be a real uh, emotional game for him um, because he hasn't been able to get over that hump in the playoffs in his first three seasons. Uh, But the the regular season that he put up was just phenomenal, and he's really developing into just an absolute beast at at the quarterback position. And I just think that uh, Peyton is just not going to be able to get it done. I know that a lot of people think that uh, for some reason this is his year, but I like the Colts. Uh, I'm going to have to disagree and go with the Broncos. Honestly, Manning needs this game after last year's embarrassment in the Super Bowl, and I don't see why he would fall back to the Colts, even though it's his old team. I just feel like he'll go you know, fire on all cylinders, on offense especially, and just get the job done. So I definitely see them moving on to the next round. Yeah, I see the Broncos moving on as well, only because Peyton did – the only thing that questions me, though, is that Peyton had a little bit of an uh, off regular season with some stinker games here and there. Mm-hmm. But I know in the playoffs, he always pulls it together. He's always a very clutch quarterback in the playoffs. So I'm going to have to go with the Broncos, also because it's at Mile High Stadium, and that's also another loud stadium to be in yeah. when Peyton Manning's there. All right, now moving on from the NFL, we will now move on to the NHL. The Devils are now 15-20-7 and after a 4-1 victory last night over the Buffalo Sabres. Patrick Eliash getting his 1,000th point in that game as well. Although the Devils right now, if you look at the NHL standings, are pretty much out of it. Yeah, uh, it's it's been a rough season so far. Obviously, uh, Eliash last night, that was a big highlight for them. Uh, he's been a valuable asset to that team uh, for the last decade or so. Um, but uh, I think that the problems fall on that offense. They just haven't been able to click. Uh, at They just haven't been able to get any momentum going. Mm-hmm. They have a few wins here and there, but they haven't been able to string them together. And I think that's what's holding them back. But I think... Uh, if they can turn it over on offense, that, that'll turn the leaf over for them, and they'll be able to have a successful end of the season. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the offense just really needs to keep it going. I mean, they have a mediocre record right now, and honestly, to the point where they're not going to make the playoffs if they keep you know, losing games. So obviously, yeah. they just need to start winning games. That's, yeah. that's, that's the big key. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's a, it's a long season. you got plenty of games left, like over 40 games left. They're mm-hmm. not even halfway through yet because mm-hmm. they haven't hit the All-Star break. But I just don't see how this team could even make the playoffs with the way they're playing, especially firing head coach Pete DeBoer, who led them to the Stanley Cup one year yeah. and was never good after that. Now they have co-coaches with Scott Stevens at the helm as well, and I just don't really see this team going yeah, that far. That's, that's just not a recipe for but success. But sometimes, if you look at other sports, though, it does take a few years for the talent to click because mm-hmm. the talent is there. Yeah, but I, I, mean, I, I think that they have a bright future. I just don't think that this is their year. Yeah, I don't either. And now we will move on to the Rangers, Sam's favorite team over here. They are 21-11-4. They will play the Ducks tonight at 10.30. If you would like to watch that and stay up late, be my guest. Yeah, uh, the Rangers have been uh, red hot lately. Um, They've won uh, seven out of their last eight. Um, They're playing great hockey right now. Uh, Hayes is just uh, a great player. Uh, Lundqvist is finally getting back to... Uh, that the the man that they're used to, the king, and I think th- as long as he keeps playing at that elite level, uh, they get goals out of Hayes, Nash, uh, and a few of their other young guns that they're going to be a force to re- be reckoned with in the playoffs. Yeah, the, uh, the Rangers have a really good record this year, and you know they just need to keep the offense going, keep the entire team, you know, producing more points, and hopefully they'll get more wins. Yeah, I think that the Rangers are finally doing what they should have been doing for all those years is letting the young guys have a chance. Like, yeah. you look at Ke- Kevin Hayes, they gave him a shot, and he's mm. playing fantastic. You yeah. got the young defenseman in, and I just think that this young talent's really going to end up clicking, especially yeah. with the leadership of Rick Nash and exactly. Marty St. Louis. That combination of veteran leadership and uh, the young potential mm. is just a great recipe for a successful team, and I think that's what the Rangers have going on right now. I also think Elaine Vigneault is doing a fantastic coaching job in there as well after he replaced John Tortorella. And now we will move on to, whoops, hold on a second. Let's go to the Islanders who, whoops, hold on, my bad. Um, The Islanders have one overtime loss on the entire year, still one of the best records in the NHL. And John Tavares having a fantastic year along with the rest of his team. (laughs) Yeah, uh, the Islanders have not let up. Uh, I know at the beginning of the season we thought that it might have been a fluke, but they're proving that they're a very capable team and capable of going far in the playoffs. Uh, Tavares is one of the greatest point scorers uh, this season in the NHL, and the goaltending uh, for the Islanders has been exceptional. Uh, as long as they keep goals from going in uh, and they keep scoring them, uh, I, don't, I don't see how they can't go far in the playoffs. 
Yeah, uh, the Islanders have been dynamic this year, and you just got to keep your foot on the gas because this is kind of where the teams start to lose, you know, a couple of games, and they start losing their momentum, but you just got to keep going at it. And, you know, it's coming to that midpoint of the season, so you just got to really stay focused and achieve the ultimate goal. Yeah, I totally agree with you there, Kadar. The Islanders' record, just so we're clear here, now that I have it up, with last night's 3-2 loss to the Canucks, they are 26-13-1. Again, one overtime loss. Otherwise, besides that, they're undefeated in overtime. Yeah. That like, I don't think there's any other team that's like that right that's now in the NHL. Yeah, that's that's still pretty impressive. And plus, their defensemen with Nick Letty and Johnny Boychuk on that dynamic defensive line, who are yeah. having both fantastic seasons. Yeah, two great defensemen. Two great scoring defensemen. They're going to have a fantastic rest of their season, and I see them as an Eastern Conference champion this year. I can see it. And now, let's move on to basketball the nets are just a few games below 500 actually and not too bad though and hold on let me just get this up here the nets are 16 and 18 they will play the celtics tonight at 7 30 celtics young squad 11 and 21 not a great record with a great coach brad stevens the nets are looking to try to turn their season around yeah uh i mean you in the Eastern Conference, you've got the top teams. You got the Raptors, the Wizards, uh, the Heat. Um, but then after that, there's a big fall off. Uh, you got the Knicks. I mean, the uh, the Nets, the Cavaliers. Um, and I think that the Nets, as part of that middle tier in the Eastern Conference, uh, around the 500 record, I just don't think that they have what it takes uh, to overcome some of these big teams in the East, let alone any of the teams in the West, because that's just by far and away uh, a better conference. Um, they've got uh, big problems, the Nets, with Darren Williams and Joe Johnson. Uh, they're just not playing uh, at a high level right now. Brooke Lopez is uh, performing pretty well. Uh, they got Jared Jack starting. Um, they got their Russians, uh, Toledovich and uh, Bogdanovich. And Karasev. Other, yeah, other than that, uh, they just don't have the scoring produc- production that it takes to be uh, a good team in the NBA. Yeah, the Nets have been very inconsistent this year, and you know, it's all kind of falls on your point guard, Darren Williams, and, you know, he's the leader of the team, and if he's not being consistent, then it really kind of messes up the groove of the team because everyone else wants to play at a high level, but if your point guard's, you know, not making the right passes, having constant turnovers, then it's really going to affect, you know, your team wins. So once Darren Williams kind of gets back in his flow, then I honestly feel like the Nets will probably be able to win some more games. But the Eastern Conference, I mean, it's really bad, and they're really not that good this year. Yeah, you look at their record, though, I mean, it seems like at the end of the regular season, like the Nets will be in the playoffs just yeah. because of their record. Mm-hmm. But it all depends on who they're facing in the first round. Now, last year, beating Toronto in seven games, looking pretty solid in the first round. And then, even though they lost in five games to the Heat, they were pretty much in every game. Like, yeah. they never got destroyed. But, uh, I mean, I think if you look at the Nets team of last year and the Nets team of this year, there's just a huge difference. They just uh, they just aren't putting up those offensive numbers that they were. Mm-hmm. Uh, they don't have the... The man, the manpower that they need uh, to go up against some of those better guys. They don't have the likes of John Wall or uh, Kyle Lowry. They just don't have these big scoring players that are. These are the players that are carrying these teams, and the Nets are missing. So, if uh, Williams and Johnson start playing the way they're supposed to, uh, I think that they have a good shot of possibly winning the Eastern Conference. But unless those guys step up, they're they're not going to do so. Yeah. yeah, I really honestly don't know what to say about the Nets now that they've traded away most of their first round draft picks right now they seem to not really have a future because they don't have a first round pick until 2018 yeah. so yeah. we'll good, see what happens there them. yeah good <laughs> luck to the Nets I'm a huge Nets fan as you can see with the shirt I'm wearing so let's hope that the Nets do well in the playoffs this year now let's move on to the sorry Knicks fans I'm using this word dreadful New York Knicks yeah that's to put it lightly yeah <laughs> very lightly record of 5 and 32 they play Washington tonight at 7 and they just dealt away J.R. Smith and Amon Shumpert, and I just have almost do you, no. Do words. you remember the last time the Knicks won a game? Because I don't. I it's, I, it I seems don't. it just seems like that long ago. Yeah. I, I, it's like they're a pee wee team against All Stars. They just ha- <laughs> yeah. it, they're just incompetent. They, it looks like they have no idea what they're doing. Uh, obviously, this trade that you mentioned, getting rid of J.R. Smith and Amon Shumpert, um, may help. It, it, it may, but I just I don't see how it could make that big of a difference. Um, they just Carmelo is uh, he's been rested the last couple games Uh, he's he's dealing with some injury problems Um, probably some shoulder injuries from putting the team on his back Um, but (laughs) aside from that 
Uh, they they just can't do anything right. Uh, Derek Fisher, I mean, I hate I hate to blame him, but uh, there's he's not doing anything to help the problem. So, I mean, if the Knicks win another game the entire season, I'll be surprised. <laughs> because I just I just don't see how it could happen. Same here. I mean, I didn't know the goal was to lose games because this is exactly what they're doing. They, I, yeah. they don't even seem like they have a will to win. It's just you know go out there. Don't even perform to our best, you know, not get the team involved. Just rely on Carmelo Anthony all the time. And then you trade away J.R. Smith and um, Iman Shumpert. So it's now it's like, who do you have left? I mean, you're not winning many more games this season. I barely see a 20-game win season from them. I honestly do. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, you kind of had to get rid of J.R. Smith just because he had that expensive contract. So yeah. that might have actually it lifted it some stuff off their some shoulders. Money, yeah, freed up some money to get someone in the offseason yeah, maybe or at the trade deadline. Money. Yeah. But, I mean, J.R. Smith... It happens in all sports. A guy, besides baseball, because of Clayton Kershaw, mm. but you look in a lot of other sports like football, basketball, especially basketball. These guys, they're playing extremely well, and once they get the big money, they just mm-hmm. they just don't yeah. play like how they're used to. Because yeah, I think they they're perform. finally saying, "Oh, look, I got what I wanted." Yeah, exactly. Uh, it, it's, it's a shame that these guys. I don't. I don't know if it's just coincidence or if whether they choose to perform like this, but they get that big money that they're looking for, and then they just feel the need not to perform. Uh, but it's it's sad to watch really because uh, after that great J R Smith uh, year when he won six six man of the year you thought that he was gonna rise into a potential star mm-hmm. but uh, he's just been a dud ever since and, and what and what about the fans also I mean they're paying like the most expensive tickets in the world to go see you know a famous basketball team and they're losing games like this like one of the original NBA teams yeah, exactly playing playing right. play in the greatest arena in the country mm-hmm. Madison Square Garden so it's uh, like why waste your fan um your fans times I mean they're coming to the game supporting your team night in and night out and you guys are losing games they're not even like putting forth an effort so yeah. once they start doing that then it's just sad yeah. yeah and now we'll move on from pro since we've covered all of our pro sports and one college team the local team out of all the local college teams we have here in new jersey one of them is doing extremely well the seton hall pirates ranked 19th in the country now after beating two top 20 teams defeating st john's and beating villanova by five in overtime they had now have a record of 12 and 2 their scoring is led by Scotch Plains native Sterling Gibbs. Yeah, uh, Sterling Gibbs obviously grew up in uh, Scotch Plains, followed his brother Ashton Gibbs uh, in playing Division One f- uh, basketball. He's really taking control of this team uh, following the injury to one of their other star players. Uh, he's put the team on his back. He led them in that huge win against Seton Hall, I, m- I mean against Villanova. Um, but I think if he can continue that leadership, uh, Seton Hall has the... Uh, the firepower to go far in this tournament and it's really great watching that uh our local team is making big moves in the big east yeah i just love to see seton hall doing well what about you Kadar? yeah it's always proud to see a local you know performing at the highest level like that and it's just amazing to see them winning so many games because usually you know they haven't been very well over the last couple of years but they've definitely made an improvement they've gotten a lot of good high school players they've gotten isaiah whitehead um angel delgado desi rodriguez and also sterling gibbs so it's like you know it's really amazing to watch this is a new team and i think they're gonna not even be good this year but for the next few years yeah so. especially with a fantastic coach like kevin willard i mean really mm-hmm. leading this team well yeah and i i can definitely see this team no matter where they are in the ranking, making the NCAA tournament. Don't know how far they're going to get as of now, but they're definitely going to make it, seems mm. like it. Oh, yeah. yeah After beating, teams, yeah, so. beating two top 20 teams, I mean, mm. that's that's huge. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Especially when they weren't ranked at the time. All right, so now let's move on to our high school sports. Start off with boys ice hockey, which is basically just ice hockey here. They now have a record of 5-5-1 five, five, and one after a big 5 nothing win against ALJ and another huge 10-1 victory last night over Dayton slash David Brearley. Yeah, uh, I think that with the addition of Nick uh, Kassara coming to the hockey team, uh, they are just playing at an elite level. Uh, he's one of the best players that this hockey team has ever seen at Scotch Plains. And I think with him uh, and the seniors, John Brugman and Davey Leong, who have been playing great all season, and uh, goalie Tim Mitchell playing at a, uh, in a very elite level, um, I think that our boys' ice hockey team is poised to make uh, one of the furthest runs in the county and state tournaments that they've ever had, and uh, that's really encouraging as a uh, as a high school fan. Yeah, it um, is. they might have a like okay record so far, but honestly, you know, once you guys get everyone together and you know really get motivated as the season goes on, because it's early in the season, you know, you start getting into more games, and then hopefully they'll start winning more. And I feel like they'll make the playoffs. Yeah, I think they're definitely gonna make the states this year. It's just a matter of how they finish out the season. And mm. the counties, they can probably win their first game in the counties for the first time since two years ago 
when they beat Clark in the first round and ended up losing in the second round to Westfield because Westfield was fantastic back then. Yeah. But they mm-hmm. beat Westfield now. That's right. That's Westfield's win. not mm-hmm. really a competitor anymore. The only people you really have to worry about in Union County now are Summit. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Summit. One of the best who, teams in the state. Yeah, uh, that that was they're probably the biggest challenge uh, in our county. Um, we had a tough loss to them earlier in the season. But Only by three goals, though. That's right, which is, <laughs> which is significantly less than what we usually lose to them by, which mm-hmm. is encouraging. And I think if we got another shot at them in counties, um, I think we got a, a darn good shot at beating them. Yeah, I think so, too. Now, boys basketball. They lost to Linden yesterday, tough loss, played a very good first half. They yeah, did, yeah. yeah. They were only down by 12 uh, heading into halftime, which is uh, very encouraging. Um, the offense has been very solid. I think that uh, in the second half, the game kind of just got away from them. I think the lack of a, of a big man is, has been plaguing them uh, for their first few games in the season. But if you look at the teams that they've played so far and the teams that they play uh, the rest of the way, they have one of the most tough schedules that any team in the state has to play. Uh, playing against the Patrick School, Roselle Catholic, Linden, who we played yesterday. Union Catholic. That's right. Some of the some of the best teams in not only the county but in the state, um, and it's a lot for our boys to ask for. Uh, they haven't been playing terrible. Um, it's been a, a little rough of a start to begin the season. One and five. Yeah, but I they think do have a win. That that's right. I think they're just uh, still uh, learning how to play together, and I think by the middle of the season and towards the end. Uh, they'll really pick it up, and I think they'll finish close to 500. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, the la- lack of height on the team has really affected them so far, and they really need to get this gel going and you know really come together as a team because it does not get easier from here. It gets way harder yeah. playing the, um, the practice school, as um, Sam said, and Roselle Catholic, which is ranked sixth in the country, by the way. So, yeah. you know, you guys really have to just you know get that gel going, get that flow going, start producing. And the offense has been playing really well. I feel like I feel like yeah. it's more the defense, but it's hard to you know block shots with guys that are six yeah. ten. Hard like to get rebounds. And, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. But. And now we'll move on to the girls. Girls two and four, after a win yesterday against Linden girls at Linden, and the girls young core right now it doesn't look too bad. Yeah, uh, Cara Foley's been uh, very solid for the girls team. Uh, obviously, Tabitha Juan Four been on the team uh, all four years. I think that her leadership is really helping these younger girls uh, get used to playing at the varsity level. And I think that uh, the more time they get, uh, the, the better they'll continue to be. And I think that the future for this team, uh, not only for the rest of this season, but for years to come, is very bright. Yeah, Tabitha's an elite high school athlete. And wherever she goes, she's going to make an impact. And I feel like, especially this year, she's really made an impact. Especially as a senior, you know, she's the, and leader the only the senior. senior on the team. Yeah, exactly. That's right. And I mean, they have a young team and they're actually not, they're doing pretty good, which I yeah. mean, it's fun to go to games and watch your team win. So, I mean, hopefully they'll just keep performing at the high level. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, beating Linden girls who are not as good as the Linden boys, but still, still I mean, yeah, very com- yeah, a very still competitive, a competitive team. team and two and four is not a bad record. And I mean, yeah. you still got, you got a, fre- a freshman as their starting point guard, Brianna O'Brien, and mm-hmm. she's playing pretty solid after the transfer of Imani Williams. Yeah. But, I mean, they really are a good young team. Like, yeah. there really is yeah, it's, it's nothing very, terrible. Yeah, it's very impressive seeing that these young girls uh, who don't have a lot of experience playing at this competitive of a level, uh, that they're stepping up to the big-time pressure. And I think that the more experience they get now, that they'll only continue to get better. Yeah, I think so, too. And now, because we don't have a guest today, we'll talk with our man Kadar Carrington over here about the winter track season. How's it going? Well, winter track is going amazing. The girls team, they have been very dynamic, led by Sarah Bowles. She's been really pushing it in the 400 meters and hopefully, you know, she'll get better as the season goes on. But the boys team, they've been killing it. Let's talk about Kobe White for a second. Kobe White has gone to two different meets and has came away with the uh, championship in the 55 meter dash, both times running, I think, a 6.75, which is really elite. Whoa, and yeah, it's been really <laughs> fast. Um, he's like one of the That's fastest in the state. <laughs> that is our running back. So, um, but let's also talk about that four by two team led by Kobe White, Merlin Edmond, Quincy Sanchez, and Jordan Jones. They've actually run the number 19 time in the nation this season and wow. number third in the state. And they're only going to get better as you know, they've been running on flat tracks as of now, which is like Drew University, Jersey City. But once they get to New York, where they have the um the bank tracks that's really where they produce the fastest times and yeah right now they're um 19th in the nation so they'll get hired they absolutely will go to nationals for it so you know so that little team is 19th in the nation yeah not the whole entire winter track no not the whole um just the four by two team you know by just that team wow yeah four kids wrecked now what do you what do you think the uh the winter track team is capable of doing this season um state championship no doubt i mean we have so many great pieces to this team and it's led by all these dynamic seniors kobe white 
Jordan Jones, Merlin Edmond, Quincy Sanchez. Uh, e- you know, everyone's just, you know, Joe Cameron Zubac. Smith. Yeah, everyone, Joe Zubak. Everyone's just, you know, contributing to the team. And once they really get to um, sectionals and state competition, it's definitely, you know, putting forth from there. Like, we're just going to get better. So mm-hmm. Awesome. All right, good luck, guys. Yeah. All right, and to close it out, we would like to announce our records for our boys and girls swimming. Girls swimming undefeated beat Westfield. By a lot, they beat Cranford yesterday. Yeah. And boys swimming, one loss, and that is to Westfield. Mm. Tough loss. Both but, those teams yeah. have uh, state title uh, aspirations, and I think they're more than capable of achieving that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a lot of potential on those teams. Well, that wraps it up for Raider Sports Radio for today. I'm Brett Mayerson. I'm Kirk Harrington. And I'm Sam Oller. And we will see you next week. Go Raiders. Go Raiders. Peace.